Hello and welcome to Living Life. May you be richly nourished and strengthened and encouraged by God's Word today. Uh, today is uh, September uh, 18th and we're on Ezekiel chapter 5. Um, imagine you're, a, ter uh, you're a, a cancer doctor and uh, you've just treated a patient, uh, but you found out that this patient uh, is uh, at the last stages of a terminal cancer and this patient doesn't know uh, that he has a cancer and uh, he's about to die pretty soon and he has only a matter of weeks left. And what would you do if you were that doctor? Do you uh, just ignore that patient and just tell him, um, hide the news from him? Uh, or do you muster up courage and you tell him uh, the reality of his condition, uh, that he has a terminal cancer and he has only weeks to live? Uh, the message, however bad it is, however hurtful or painful it is, uh, if it's true, it needs to be heard. And so we see that in today's passage. Uh, Ezekiel has this bad news of God's judgment. Is he going to, uh, like the cancer doctor, hide the truth and, and you know, uh, ignore uh, this uh, potentially uh, bad news? Or is he going to uh, communicate uh, this bad news because it's true and it's coming, it's going to happen for sure? So we see that in our passage today, uh, that uh, Ezekiel is presenting another sign act, another visual representation of God's message. So what is the message of God that, is, that he is trying to convey to Israel? And maybe some of you are going through a series of bad news in your life uh, today. Then what, uh, where is the hope? Where is good news? What is our good news in the midst of all the bad news that we hear in this world? So let's go into our passage today. Ezekiel chapter 5 verses 1 through 17 Now, son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up the hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair with fire inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city, and scatter a third to the wind. For I will pursue them with drawn sword. But take a few strands of hair and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire will spread from there to the whole house of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the center of the nations, with countries all around her. Yet, in her wickedness, she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. You have been more unruly than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you, Jerusalem, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Because of all your detestable idols, I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst, fathers will eat their children and children will eat their fathers. I will inflict punishment on you and will scatter all your survivors to the winds. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will withdraw my favor. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls, and a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue with drawn sword. Then my anger will cease, and my wrath against them will subside, and I will be avenged. 
and when I have spent my wrath upon them, they will know that I, the Lord, have spoken in my zeal. I will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations around you, in the sight of all who pass by. You will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning and an object of horror to the nations around you, when I inflict punishment on you in anger and in wrath, and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I shoot at you with my deadly and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. I will bring more and more famine upon you and cut off your supply of food. I will send famine and wild beasts against you, and they will leave you childless. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you, and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. In our passage today, Ezekiel is told to、uh, visually present to Israel uh, the uh, complete judgment of God, and the visual representation、uh, goes like this: Ezekiel is told to、uh, grab a military-grade sword. This is not your Daddy's razor.、Uh, he grabs that military-grade sword and、uh, he uses it as a razor. And he is told to shave all of his、uh, hair off. And uh, uh, with that, it's no doubt it's a sign of humiliation and mourning,、uh, devastation that falls upon Israel for their sin. And with the hair that is、uh, gained from the shaving,、um, uh, Ezekiel is told to divide it up into one third. Uh, so first one third,、uh, he is told to burn it up.、Uh, no doubt, a sign of、uh, just plague, uh, uh, devastation、uh, that falls upon the one third of the population. And the other, the second one third, is told to、uh, be cut down with the sword. And the judgment of God is that、uh, the people will be、uh, cut down with the sword of the enemies of God、um, uh, during the siege. And then the last third、uh, of the hairs that are gained. Uh, is told to、uh, just be blown away by the wind, and uh, this uh, shows that one third of the population will be scattered、uh, at the hands of enemy to the different parts of the land.、Uh, the message of God is、uh, is simple and plain. It is because of because of the sins and the wickedness of Israel that God had no choice but to、uh, bring complete devastation and judgment upon the land. And、uh, the verses、uh, today it just describes all the sins that Israel has committed against God.、Uh, it says that their wickedness has even surpassed that of the Gentile nations、uh, among them, and they gave themselves away freely to detestable idols and vile images, and just corrupted the whole land and whole country、uh, with their sin. And their wickedness was so piled up. Uh, that even the sanctuary of God, even it's told that even the temple of God、uh, became corrupt with vile images and abominable、uh, practices. So the sin of Israel against God was so great、uh, that the judgment had to be、um, uh, it had to be complete. It has to be devastating.、Uh, it has to be uh, just uh, swift uh, judgment upon the whole、uh, land. So as a result. Uh, God's anger and His wrath、uh, burned, a righteous anger burned against、uh, the sins of Israel, and uh, uh, it, it burned in His judgment、uh, against them. And yet, God is perfectly、uh, righteous in His judgment against them. Why?、Uh, because Israel uh, uh, totally committed their、uh, sins against them,、uh, so that God is totally justified. Uh, in his anger and his wrath, divine wrath against sin. So, what is the message of all of this? What is the message that we can gain from、uh, God's total retribution and His judgment against、uh, judgment against sin? The message is、uh, the absolute filth、uh, and the grossing、uh, nature of sin against God, and the absolute horror horror of God's judgment、uh, against sin. You know.、Um, We saw that even yesterday as well. But our nature, we tend to rationalize and we tend to minimize our sins against God.、Uh, we say that God is always forgiving and God loves me the way I am.、Uh, so we kind of minimize the, the, the nature of our sin and 
And uh, we, we miss out on the vile uh, nature of our sin against God. Uh, and so when we uh, come across these passages about God's divine retribution and His judgment and His wrath, uh, we, uh, honestly, we have a hard time in our hearts to uh, take in some of these words. And yet, and yet uh, God is, does mince words when He talks about judgment. Uh, Israel's sin against God is so great. And so, therefore, God's judgment against Israel is likewise great. So where is the hope in all of this? The hope, the hope lies in uh, uh, the first uh, uh, verse 4, where uh, Ezekiel is told to keep just a few uh, bit of hair uh, in the fold of his garment. Just a few uh, bit of his hair uh, is kept, and it's, it refers to the remnant of Israel. Yes, the, the whole Israel is judged uh, by God because of their sin, but God will keep for himself just a few remnant. And through the few remnant, God will prove himself faithful to the covenant, and he's going to restore the nation back to him because our God is faithful uh, to his promises. Those, that is our hope for us uh, today. These words of God's uh, fierce judgment that we read, um, it shows us clearly why Jesus had to suffer so terribly on the cross. You know, people say, oh, why, why was cross necessary? Why was all that suffering necessary? Well, it was necessary because our sin against God was so great. There was no other way for God to pay for our sins other than Jesus suffering terribly on the cross. On the cross, Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The divine wrath, the, the fierce wrath of God and the judgment of God fell upon Jesus on the cross so that you and I in Jesus, uh, we can experience God's favor and his blessing for us today. So in closing, uh, some of you guys may be going through worst of all times, uh, maybe experiencing some, some of the worst news that you've ever heard in your life. You look around and it's all bad news, and hope, st uh, hope seems to be fleeting. This is the best news that we can hear in the worst of times, is that Jesus took upon himself the divine wrath of God so that now we can experience uh, God's blessing over us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we ask, Lord, uh, that you would clearly remind our hearts uh, of the price that your Son has paid on the cross, so that the judgment that we read in the Bible today, Lord, it fell upon your Son, so that we can experience your blessing uh, in Christ, your Son, and the price that he paid. So God, would you remind our soul of what he has done for us and cause our hearts to worship, adore Jesus, and follow him today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music>